Welcome fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Well, like many other board gamers and tabletop miniatures gamers out there, I've been buying into a lot of Kickstarters. Uh, the most recent one was Conan by Monolith. And like all these Kickstarters, it's full of miniatures, heaps and heaps. So I was thinking to myself, how am I going to paint all these miniatures in a reasonable amount of time? Well, I've come up with some ideas and I'm making some others up as I go along and I'm going to share them with you here on this special Esoteric Order of Gamers miniature painting tutorial series. So the first thing you should do when approaching the problem of painting lots and lots of miniatures is to, as Conan would say himself, pick your battles. There's no point painting all your miniatures at once because it's too daunting. I mean, there might be 100, 150 miniatures there, all the paint at once, it would be crazy. So the important thing is to get the miniatures together that you're going to play for your next game. So for example, we've already played this first scenario in the clutches of the Picts, which was great, but the miniatures weren't painted. So I know the next time we play, we won't be playing this scenario. We'll be playing the next one, which is called Hunting the Tigress. So I'm going to paint the figures just for this scenario because I want to have them painted for our next game. And well, here they all are. What I've done here is taken those miniatures and the first thing that I do is give them a good wash. Now, if you look at my other tutorials, you'll see that with plastic miniatures, it's always a good idea to give them a wash in a bit of water with a little bit of detergent and give them a bit of a scrub with an old toothbrush and that just cleans off any residue. The next thing I did was to put a bit of blue tack on the bottom and stick them all on this piece of card. And I put them on this card so I can spray primer all over them. Now this piece of card has a few pieces of foam core stuck on the back like this, so I can hold it very easily and then go outside of course and with a face mask on to protect uh, myself from the fumes and I can spray all these quickly in one go. But wait, you might be saying, what about all the preparation of the miniatures? What about scraping the flash off and mold lines and all that kind of thing? Well, I'm going to do something a bit radical here. I'm not going to worry about that stuff. And the reason is, it takes ages going through every single miniature, scraping off every little bit of mold line and all the rest of it. Instead, what I've done with these miniatures is that I've gone straight to the priming stage, after I've given them a bit of a wash, and the good thing about primer is that it shows up any obvious flash and mold lines. So once they're already primed, I can look at them and say, well, which bits of flash really bother me? Which bits of mold line really bother me? And I can scrape them off afterwards and then just repaint it with a bit of white. Now, the thing is, is that when I look at these miniatures, most of them look pretty good, especially from a playable distance, because remember, you're not looking at a miniature like this when you're playing, you're looking at it down there, from a distance. So don't worry too much about the exact detail. Now, of course, these tips don't apply if you want perfectly painted miniatures and you want every one of the miniatures for this game to be fantastic high-end jobs. But what we're doing here is getting it on the table fast and looking good. So that's what I've done. These are all primed. The next stage is to start painting them quickly. And the more organized you are, the faster your painting is going to go. So here I've got my wet palette, which is great for painting and keeping your paints nice and moist. Um, I've got um, a jar of water, I've got some paper towel, I've got my brushes, and of course I've got my paints all nicely organized by hue in these um, trays. Now, as for the miniatures themselves, because I'm going to be doing some fast painting and getting through these as fast as I can, what I've done is I've blue tacked them to strips of foam core. So here are all the pirates. We've got four in a row here and when I paint these I can go put on a colour, put on a colour, put on a colour, put on a colour and get through them really quickly like that. So all the pirates are on strips of foam core like this. All of these guard characters are on this strip. There's, all, there's five all up and they're on one strip. All of the Bassonian arches are all on one strip like that. Um, that way I can just get a colour and whip through the whole lot and get it done as quickly as possible. Now you might also notice that I haven't done any texturing of the bases. Now the only texturing of the bases I've done is on these four hero characters. And I've done this in the usual way, which is to put down some PVA glue, a bit of sand, and then some watered down PVA glue to seal it. 
So I've done that the normal way and then I thought to myself, well, I don't want to go through that process with every single miniature. So all of these miniatures have no texture on the base and later on I'm going to use some Games Workshop paint on texture for that. So that'll also take some steps out of the process. Another thing I like to do before I start painting is to get myself some reference material together. And uh, this may vary depending on your technical requirements, but in this case what I've done is gone online and got a whole lot of images of these Conan figures, put them together into a PDF and then saved them on my iPad. So if I open the Conan PDF here, I can see the illustrations from the campaign. And that gives me some good color reference. And also if I see some really nice uh, work by other painters, I'll take those pictures as well because I may be using their color schemes. And while I'm painting, I can keep this by my uh, painting setup and quickly decide what colors I'm using to paint the miniatures. Well, here we are ready to paint and I'm going to take an unusual approach here because I want to finish these as soon as possible. And that is instead of taking them as a bunch on a card here, so doing, for example, here five at a time, I'm going to do the whole batch in one go when it comes to colors. So I'm going to start with the skin tones and do the skin tones throughout all of the figures. I'm going to get those colors on my palette and then just paint all of them in one go. So they're all done and then move on to colors in the same way in sequence. Now I'm sure you've heard this many times, but the important thing is to thin your paint. Mix it with a bit of water so it's thinned out a little bit. And also when you're doing things like skin tones, don't worry about being neat because you're going to cover up the edges around them when you paint the other parts. So you don't have to be all neat about it. So the next thing I'm going to do in order to minimize as much mucking around with colors, I've got a red here on my palette and then I'm going to go through and do all the figures where there are bits of red. So on these guards, their loincloths will be red and I'll go across to the pirates and pick out any red spots I want to. This way I minimize mucking around with paint pots and putting paint on my palette and doing all that. I can do all the reds and then pick another color and do all that color and try and do this in a mass production kind of way. So there you are, lots of red. So I've got it on some of the hero figures where red is necessary on some of the pirates, not all of the pirates because they'll be wearing different outfits. Um, a little bit on one of the heroes there, on the guards. So, done all that red and I've only opened the red paint pot once, so it saved a lot of time. So I'm going to keep doing things like this with different colours, putting down um, as many base colours I can and, and basically just filling up all the white. Yeah, but don't be too um, precise about this because some of these colors will be covered up, covered up with other colors and you can retouch them later. So if you make um, a few mistakes and go over onto other areas, don't worry too much. The important thing here is speed. I've mixed and matched the colors a little bit. There's one set of pirates. Here's another set, different colors. Here's another set. Now you can see the colors are applied pretty neatly, but not super, super carefully. And that is because when the wash goes on, it's going to cover up a lot of those mistakes. Here's another set, slightly more dashing red coats. It breaks up the visual appearance of these a bit. So that's all the pirates. We've got Elite's guards. Now these don't look too bad, even just with the base coat, but that wash is going to add more definition. Then we've got these bowmen. You can see I've painted most of the details, but pretty roughly. Then we've got some of the bad guys. He's just, uh, this demon's just in grey. It's the sorcerer fellow. Another guy. And then finally the heroes. And of course with the heroes you might want to put a little bit more care into the final stages of this process just to make them a little bit more special. But at this stage, just basic base coats. Okay, now we've done all those, it's time for the washing phase where we give them a wash to, to define all of the detail in the miniature. And we're going to do that super quick with a special product from Army Painter. And here's that product. It's called 
quick shade and it's by Army Painter. Now you can actually dip the models into this stuff for an instant wash but what I'm going to do is be a little bit more careful and brush it on and then I'm going to use the brush to remove any excess. The advantage of using this stuff over normal say Gaines Workshop washes is that it just gives a little bit of extra definition. Um, I wouldn't use it for special painted miniatures where I was doing a you know premium paint job but for this kind of bulk painting this stuff is really really good. So let me show you how it works. The first thing I'll do is give this stuff a good shake and open it up. Now this stuff is a little bit smelly and you need to use um, white spirits or terps to clean your brushes so I'd use a, a large old brush and make sure you work in a well ventilated space. So I'm going to paint this on pretty roughly. All over the miniature. <laughs> oh, it does smell a bit so really, as I said, make sure your space is well ventilated. Now I must acknowledge a debt to Zerastro here, who's a fantastic miniature painter who does YouTube videos on painting miniatures and it was one of his videos that put me onto this stuff. Now once you've done that what you do is wipe off any excess. So try and wipe it off any areas where you want it to be particularly highlighted and make sure it doesn't pull too heavily anywhere either on the base or anywhere else. And actually I don't really do, need to do too much there. It's looking pretty good. Just wipe it off those bits you're going to highlight and then you can come back to it in a, in a little while and just check to see that it isn't pulling anywhere where you don't want it to pull. You can see already that's looking pretty good and we've got some nice muscle definition in there and that's looking alright in comparison to the one there that hasn't had the Army Painter quick shade treatment. So I'm going to do that with all my figures and then I'm going to let them dry at least overnight and see how they all look. Okay, now you've put on the quick shade. Um, you'll end up with quite a glossy effect on the figures which doesn't look too good so before I go any further because this is kind of an interim step before I put on a little bit more detail and do some basing before I go any further I'm going to spray the figures with a bit of matte varnish to take off that glossy look well I think this is a perfect example of how great this technique is to uh, get those figures painted quickly and on the table because tonight I'll be playing a game of Conan and we'll be playing the second scenario and here I have all the figures for the second scenario all base coated and washed and looking pretty good really I mean obviously I'm going to do more work on these but at least we can play the game tonight with pretty well painted figures and we've got a whole set and really that didn't take too much time at all just a few evenings a couple of hours each time and these are all done now I'll be going on to show you more techniques for making these look a little bit prettier for doing some basing and uh, taking them to the next stage but these are looking pretty good for getting them on the table and playing with them. <laughs>